Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. And today I decided to cover one of the best plugins that every animator should use in Maya, and it's Animbot. I'm pretty sure you already heard about it, and as you might know, there are a lot of tools here, so I decided to go through all of them and show you my favorite one. So let's start with this one here. So this one is basically is uh, anytime you have to like rotate or translate, but you want to do very small rotation or you know uh, or very small or very small translation value, this one is the one that's gonna help you because here you can decide the value that you actually want to increase your rotation. For example, if I want to rotate on Z, I can just go here. I decided that I want to increase by 0 0.1 and just press the plus button. As you can see, in this way, you can control much easier, you know, your rotation and translation when you don't really want to do just small adjustment. The second one is really cool as well. And, uh, but before we go into, into description, I want to show you guys that here you have a little arrow where you can expand all of them or if you click here on the box it's gonna give you a list then uh, then the one that you want to have visible this one allows you guys to offset your keys and add or remove frames in the middle so for example this one here i can offset all the keys to the right or to the left here i can change the number of keys that i wanted to be offset and this one is gonna offset the key only starting from your frame selection towards the left, towards the right, sorry. The amazing thing about this tool is that with this one is gonna offset the keys only of the controller that you select, but if you go here and you select the right between the scene, it's gonna affect all the keys in your scene. That's really amazing. This button over here is setting is gonna basically reset the character on your typos. Okay, and that's really nice. But if you want, instead of going back to the T pose, you can actually snapshot any single pose. For example, I can snapshot this, this pose here. And now if I go to any other one, when I'm gonna press this button again, it's gonna go back to that pose. Almost like a little library tool, if you wanna call it like that. Let's move to the next section of the tutorial. So here on this slider, if we click on this arrow, we can open all the other options, okay? This one here is about to adjust the easy in, easy out between two poses with all the keys in between. To give you a better idea, let me open the graph editor. So just to give you an idea of what's going on, I'm gonna select all the keys in the middle, only for one controller. And I'm gonna slide the controller here. And as you can see how they are smoothing the tangent, okay? Just to have like a nice easy hin until it comes to stop, okay? And the nice thing is now that I can do all of this with all the controller, And again, smooth it until the end. And now as you can see, it's very linear of course the transition, but at least you will have a nice easy in, easy out, okay? Now this one over here is for the offset. For example, when you want to offset the upper controller of the spine to have a nice overlapping. So basically what's happening is that, um, you know, we're gonna select the controller first as usual. For now, maybe just the rotation controller, just to show you what's going on. And if I select all those key here, and I use this controller. You see basically the value are shifting around, okay? So the key stays the same, but the value are, are being shifted to the next key or the previous one. This other one here instead is basically if you wanna keep pushing your pose. So for example, I have one key pose here and another one here. And if I adjust this one, as you can see, it's keep pushing the tangent until, you know, a more extreme poses. Of course, you have to be very careful with this one. I guess it will work all in certain cases. For example, here on my finger, obviously it's not working. So you can choose to use only on certain controller and stuff like that. This one over here is the classic twin machine. So it means between two keys, I can go here and create another key closer to the next one or to the previous one. But the cool stuff is that if you press this button, is gonna increase the length here of the twin machine and you can go over this one to create an overshoot. For example, if I click here, I'm going really close to the end. You see it's actually overshooting the next frame. So we're gonna have the key here, overshoot, and then go back to the default one. Really nice feature. This one over here is blend to default. It means we can blend this one to the default position of the character, okay? Now, if you guys wanna mirror this hand pose to this one here, you just can use this one as blend to mirror. And as you can see, you can copy 
to the next one. Now the next one is something I really love it. So assume this scenario where you have like a, a work cycle in place and then you use the master controller to make your character look forward but it doesn't matter how precise you are the, the feet might slide and then you have kind of counter animated you know so let's let this controller highlight translation and rotation move to the next frame and go to blend to neighbor here and go to the next one then we're gonna do the same with this other key okay And, and this part we're gonna keep it that way. Now, as you can see, if you're snapping frame by frame, if you're snapping key to key, you see now it's kind of lock, okay? So of course it might still slide a little bit, but you can still add extra key when you need it, and then use again, uh, <coughs> and then use again this tool just to blend, you know, all the key to the previous one. It's still gonna take a little bit longer, but I think in this way you don't have to do it. You don't have to do it manually. You know the tools is gonna do it for you. I think this is really fantastic. I forgot to mention one thing: if you wanna use the blend to neighbor in that way, you have to press this button here. Okay. In this case, it's gonna ignore the workspace and everything. This button over here is to create channel set. So now, for example, I'm gonna select all the face controller. Okay. Click here. I'm gonna choose. I'm gonna write face, controller, and choose a color, okay? So now anytime I press this button here, it's gonna automatically select all the controller, really nice. And if by any chance you wanna add another controller later, you can select those controller, right click here, add selection. And now again, those new controller are part of the group. And if I wanna have a group only for the eyes, again, I'm gonna click here, controller, and yellow. Okay, so I think this is really lovely. With this button here, so that we can select the opposite controller. But before doing that, actually, we have to create a snapshot of a typos. So we go here, snapshot of the typos of our character. Close. And now, after that, we create the snapshot in the typos. If I select a controller here, press this button, it's gonna create the opposite. Same for every other controller. Okay. It does automatically, it's really efficient. This button over here is gonna mirror your pose or your own animation. So make sure again you always use the snapshot here for the typos. Select all the controller, highlights, you see, all the controller that you wanna mirror. Press this button here. It's gonna take a while now to evaluate. And now as you can see, the animation is flipped. Really awesome, guys. This one over here is super simple but very effective. So basically by default, if I select this cube and then select the hand controller, I'm gonna just press this one one more time. It's gonna align the cube by rotation and translation to the hand controller, okay? Very easy. If instead I go on the arrow right here and I go align object all keys, it's gonna do the same but for all the keys. As usual here, guys, you also have all the other options if you align only position, only orientation, only scale and stuff like that, but it's very straightforward. What about where we have a scenario where we have a work cycle, but basically we animate the work cycle in place again and we are using the master controller to move the character forward. And at a certain point, you know what, guys, we want to remove the animation on the master controller, but we still want to see the character working forward. So this tool over here is coming to help us. So what you have to do is select all the controllers that you animated, Okay, I like them. Go here, click on the right arrow, and press copy from workspace. Now at this point, we can just remove the animation. Okay, we're going to select the same controller as before. I light all the key again, and go on paste X4. And there you go. Of course, the animation wasn't perfect, so there is some sliding, but you get the idea. I think this is another great tool that's gonna help us a lot, guys. This one over here is another interesting one because it allows you to change the rotation order of your controller or the local space to world space to certain controller, okay, guys? For example, let's say I have all this rotation, okay, and my rotation order here is Z, X, Y, and I wanna click here and I can choose, okay, which rotation order that I want. Those ones are only for the current keys, and these ones are for all the keys. So for example, I want to change this one to XYZ. 
and now it's evaluating it and now you know it changed overall through the animation by XYZ and keep the same animation okay really nice and you can do the same things guys for the word space right now the follow line is on zero so it means that anytime I like to move the pelvis you know the head is kind of stuck so what about for example then uh, when I'm gonna rotate the body on the side I want to keep the head like this okay and same from the other side so I still want to have that during the animation the head is following the pelvis but when it comes to clean up the animation because I don't want to do this counter animation I want to have like the the head in wall space then again I can go here and again I can choose between current keys or all keys and I switch to the other side and now you see it changed from 0 to 1 so it's still it's still so it's still gonna keep the same animation okay but it's happening now that the head is locked in place so so yeah this guy is another really cool tool now we have a tool here actually to change the pivot of our controller it's very easy and intuitive click here on the icon move the pivot wherever you want and then you can easily press the E button to go on the rotation controller and now you are temporarily changing your pivot really awesome guys and then if you want to change it back just go back and press on the icon this one over here it works almost like an animation layer so as you can see here in this animation the character is actually is looking to this side of the screen as you notice I have a key every like 4 or 5 frame okay but what about if really quickly I want to test what's going on if for example like um, how the character is going to look like looking to this side of the screen you know but I don't want to adjust uh, manually every single key so I can just align the key that I want press this button over here turn the, the head like this and now it's more or less going to keep the same animation but of course reorienting the controller into the left side and if I want to keep those changed I'm going to just press the button again and it's going to keep maintaining the animation and in the next part of course it's going to snap back you know so it always going to work on the key that you actually highlight let's move to the art tracker right now by default this is a lot faster than the one built in Maya so I guess this is already a bonus but you can also change the style and the one for example I like it a lot is noise temperature so this is mean that in case there is any noise in the arc any like pop or bump it will give you immediately feedback with a change of color so for example here I put like the the vertex inside and there is this like and the arc and the arc is kind of broken you can see you can see the color is changing so you can see uh, easily of course when we are in a close-up scenario like this you don't really need it but if you have a really long sequence your object is far away and everything you know and it might be difficult to track all those things having this kind of uh, color feedback might help you a lot guys another amazing feature about this one is that you can track arc related to camera space and no wall space so for some reason this one is not really working I think it could be because I, this is like Maya 2019 not really sure about it I contacted them but uh, you know once they're gonna fix it it's, it's gonna help a lot so basically it means that you know uh, if the camera is rotating around an object it will only track the arc of, of an object related to camera so as you can see now there is a bug and the arc is very it's very small it's not doing this its job properly but even like this you can see if there is uh, you know anything that is going on for example like here the the object is bouncing back related to camera and maybe that's not exactly what you want so you can still fix it I guess but it's not as easy as supposed to be uh, but I guess it could be because of my 2019 guys maybe if you know more about this you can let me know in the comment guys this button over here is really simple it's basically freezing your viewport so as you can see there is nothing going on here and you might ask what the hell you want to do that in case sometimes you guys have a lot of uh, things that you want to clean up okay you have a lot of keys that you want to and you just want to clean the curves or something like that you don't really care what's going on in the viewport because are just very minor adjustment and you don't want to have like your computer slowing down or something then you can just freeze the viewport and your machine will focus only on the, on the graph editor sometimes you might have like a really long sequence like this one okay 300 frame or even more like 600 frame 1000 frame and, and it could be really difficult to navigate from different section of your scene so with this tool over here we can create actually tag for different section for example let me highlight this part here create a tag and say beginning I choose a color no maybe this part here I want to call it middle I 
and so on, I'm going to make something for the end. Now, if you guys want to manage those things really easy, you can just go here. And again, you can change the name. You can go in specific section by clicking on the button. You can re-edit the timing and you can delete them if you want. And then as the last one, there is this amazing tool that you want to keep activating. Okay. Then basically it's going to save uh, like, um, I guess it's going to save your SIM file every five minutes. So in case Maya crash or something, you won't lose as much. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed as usual. I didn't cover all the tools because there are really so many. I just went through all the major ones. Guys, I really love this tool. Uh, I'm sure you will love it too if you're not already using it. So my recommendation is actually, you know, purchase the tool, give it a try. Maybe you have like a 30 days trial, uh, but I think it's really worth it and it's going to save a lot of time during your production. See you next time, guys.